Good morning, people. Welcome to the Progressive. I wanted to talk to you something interesting today. In this series, we will try and speak about the various aspects of the human being which come out in the 12 ascendants. So first one and the foremost and the most badass being the ego. Everybody has ego issues. So we'll talk about the ego issues. How it plays out in the 12 ascendant. So follow this brief presentation and you'll see what I mean with respect to the houses, etc, etc, the diamond chart. So ego and how it plays out in our life uh, in different areas for different ascendants. It's just think of it as 12 colors of a rainbow, if you will. Not 7, this time 12. So everything is about 12, yes? Even in the new energies, everything is about 12. There's a hint right there. So follow this presentation and we'll take it step by step. I had to do it in the presentation format so it can go quickly. Keep following the presentation. Take care. Have a nice day. Welcome again, people. So we spoke about the soul, the sun, the self, the ego. So the ego is basically signified in Vedic astrology by the sun. The sun is also the soul. Now, why these two dichotomies? Why these two aspects? One is called the ego, one is called the higher ego or the higher self. Well, when the soul comes to play, it comes to play in the ascendants and it plays through the 12 signs in different ways. But when it comes as an embodied self, when the soul, which is pure abstract awareness of all that is, when it comes into the body, it assumes the form and shape of an ego. It has to have an identity, a standpoint or perspective. Where are you going to measure the perspective from? It's every time individual, isn't it? So the sun or the soul self, just to recap, what does the sun stand for? This is the symbol of the sun right there. And it stands for what? It stands for a sense of self, ego, fame, recognition. The self-illuminating principle of the soul is the ego. Okay, It's a self-illuminating principle, meaning it does not require illumination from an external source. It wants to find its illumination in and of itself. That's why it feels the ego. It's a significator or karaka of all ascendants. The first house is where the sun shines. One of the places where sun shines. Also the tenth place, but the first house very predominantly for all ascendants. So if you're a Virgo, or a Gemini, even if the ascendant is governed by Mercury, sun is shining through Mercury through your head because first house is also the place of the head. So where all our difficulties lie, isn't it? The constant mind chatter, what I feel like, where is the I residing? It's residing in the head. Everybody's ego is in the head all the time. So it gives light to every other lord of the first house. Okay, every lord of the first house. For all the 12 descendants, sun shines in the first house. It's the karaka, it's a significator. It's also the nourisher, the father figure, the authority figure. Sun loves authority, it loves direction towards itself. That's the ego. Ego loves direction towards itself. It says, look at me. The look at me principle of the ego is the sun. It's the sole light of the ego. It wants to shine through expression, knowledge, pursuits, wants to express presence, ego and authoritativeness. That's the sun. That's what it wants. Sun's place in the chart determines where the ascendant wants to show its presence this lifetime around. It's just this, this lifetime. Even if you have taken 12 births and you have gone through all the 12 ascendants, you know pretty much what it feels like to be under each ascendant. This is why the souls take multiple lifetimes to learn. Where the soul light through ego is felt strongly. This is just a recap. Now let's see through the ascendants, right? This is the ascendant chart. Aries, first one. So where do the Aries people feel their ego the maximum? You have to look for the house of the sun. In this case, it's in the fifth house. The fifth house stands for education, creativity, romance, creative intelligence, love, children, and all kinds of basic education. Okay, this house number five, this is the house of the sun. So one through 12 ascendants, we will be looking at wherever five falls in. Okay, so for the Aries, it falls in the house of education and children. So for an Aries man or a woman, it, they will be looking at this area of their life to feel their maximum ego. Their egotistical sense of accomplishment will be felt in the fifth house. 
they might be egotistical towards their children they might want to dominate their children if especially son is present here very dominating quality if the son is actually present here this is the house of the son remember number five is the house of the son physical placement is different for every ascendant so but this is where the person wants to feel their ego they want to feel their ego in their education perhaps they might want to be very well educated the aries people because they feel their ego there as in if i'm not well educated if i don't have n number of professional degrees to my name who am i where do i belong all these kind of things the aries ascendant wants to feel i'm not a woman very strong egotistical attachment felt in the fifth house they might be strongly romantic people because this is also the house of love and romance so they might be very romantic guys or uh, women men and women so they might feel their ego presence if they are refused in love or if they are not getting the word here if they are unsuccessful in their courtships and their love relationships there is going to be a big ego hurt felt because house number 5 is ruling that for the aries ascendant see one more reason and one more place is creative intelligence these people might want to associate everything with creativity they might want to make their presence felt in their creative endeavors because this is where their ego is felt again wherever house number 5 resides for every single ascendant you will feel ego most strongly let's go to the next one for the taurus ascendant number 5 has now shifted to house number 4 so in the fourth house which is for home and family the taurus will feel a strong egotistical presence there they might since it's the house of the enemy for this for this ascendant because venus is ruling the first house venus and sun are not friends with each other it's an enemy house for the taurus the fourth house and now sun has landed there so they might be enemical towards their spouse towards their kids they might be have we get an energy of enemy and they might shower it on their house home front okay because there is an enemy there also they will have a strong egotistical attachment towards their home front meaning they might be their dark sides or their shadow aspects of self which is ego basically might show up strongly in their homes they might show it off with their spouse they might show it off with their kids they might show it off with if they are staying with parents and so on and so forth not a very good place for the taurian ascendants and when you say ascendants we mean lagna as they call in sanskrit it's called lagna the lagna is more important because of this where is your lagna where is your ascendant pointing towards in this case the lagna is taurus or vrishabha rashi as they call it okay so uh torians will feel more on the um home front their ego will be felt more on the home front if they have good houses if they have uh, good environments to live in they will feel ego through that look i have a three bedroom house or a four bedroom house or i have a good house to stay in they will feel their ego in that but since this is an enemy sign it's like they have lots of tussles at home torians have natural tussles at home doesn't matter what the other planets are because this is an enemy house for them this is crucial to un- understand for every ascendant it goes whether the friend or the enemy is there for because that's where they are perceiving things from they are perceiving things from the ascendant so obviously everything is measured from the head next one the gemini people gemini is ruled by mercury and number 3 house number 3 comes in so they are very mentally driven that's the first first aspect and house number 5 here for them lands in house number 3 the sign number 5 lands in house number 3 or the house of skills or the hands hand set is where shoulders and hands is what house number 3 physically stands for as per vedic astrology so these people it's a friendly sign but where will they feel their ego their ego or their sense of self is very strongly attached sense of of self tongue is not rolling today their sense of self 
is not is very strongly attached to their skill sets house number three is for skill sets it's for their communication it's for their intelligence which is used in communication in social media these people might be very dominant in social media the gemini people gemini ascendant gemini lagna so this is where they will feel their um, ego the most it also stands for physical intimacy position. So wherever it comes to physical intimacy with the spouses, these people might be want to dominate that area. They are very dominant in the area of physical intimacy with their partners because number five is ruling the third house, which also stands for physical intimacy. It stands for social communication, social media. It stands for hand skills. If you are a very handsy person, art and crafts maybe, depending upon where the Venus is, that's where they will feel their ego as well. Next on our list, Cancer. Cancer Ascendant, number four, it's ruled in the Ascendant by the Moon. So straight off, they have more emotional inclination towards everything. They will drag emotions all over the place. And house and sign number five comes in house number two, the second house, as you can see here. So the sign of Leo comes in the second house. Second house is for face. It's for all the aspects of the face, your physical facial features, your facial appearance. So they have a lot of egotistical attachment towards their physical beauty, their face, because face is where the most of the ego lies of a person. It's where people keep admiring themselves in the mirror all the time because it's the face. It gives you a sense of ego there. For cancer, it is very predominant because house number five itself lands in the second house. It's friendly sign for them, so that's not a much of an issue. But for cancer ascendant, if you want to flatter them, if they are your spouse or friends, just compliment them on their face and they'll be all filled with themselves. All right? Leo, now the house number five lands in the head. When the house number five lands in the head itself, the person by default without requiring anything, want all the attention towards themselves. This is the most egotistical sign of all because they want all the attention which is going to their head all the time. This includes the face, by the way, like the cancer, but Leo, since number five is landing in the mind, the first house, and sun is the Karaka of the first house. So it is sun, house of the sun, supported by the sun's house. It's so like a double whammy of kinds, okay? These people, that's why Leo ascendants can be highly egotistical. The Simha Rashi, Simha Lagna, okay? The Lagna is Simha or the Lion or the Leo. So these people will be egotistical by default. You cannot uh, escape that. This is what they have to learn to temper it with their other signs. They have to learn to work with their home and family, with their kids, with their spouses, with their get higher knowledge, go into spirituality. All these friend signs they must move into to discover more and recalibrate that, that aspect which can become very egotistical and make it more aligned with a higher self. For Virgo Ascendants, uh, the for number five, sign number five comes in the 12th house. As you can see, we are all going backward in the scheme of things. So for Leo, it was here. So for Virgo, it is there. Uh, for Libra, it's going to be there and so on and so forth. So for Virgo, your house, sign number five lands in house number 12, the 12th house, as you can see. The 12th house stands for spirituality, renunciation. So they find their ego, which is very ironical to find ego in the house of spirituality, but that's the fact. How much spiritual knowledge they think they have, mind the words, they think they have, or they will go on showing off that I have learned this, I have read so and so books on spirituality, because this is still an earth sign. Virgo is the earth sign. And they are ruled very much by practicality of the Mercury but they want to show it off as an ego factor because sun rules the 12th house to all their family, friends and so on. Spiritual knowledge is like a feather in the cap for Virgo ascendants. Okay, um, kind of a strange energy, but yeah. For the Libra people, the Tula Lagna people, 
um, house number five falls in, sorry, sign the Leo, sign number five falls in house number 11, the 11th house. This will make Librans seek the maximum recognition, the fame or the recognition in the community, in the worldwide community, in the worldwide web or the larger community of people. They all, all their life, they'll be seeking recognition there. Another place where you can see for every ascendant is the seeking of recognition. That's where house number five falls in. That's where they're seeking their recognition. That's where they want to feel themselves the strongest, the drive to feel strongest. So these people will seek recognition in the community, in, in the World Wide Web network or social media and so on and so forth. But that's an enemy house for Librans because it's the house of the sun, which is antithesis to Venus. So they might find a lot of enemies in social media and the social community, but this is where they seek it. They'll feel very happy with their ego or achievement, sense of achievement, if they achieve some recognition in social media. That's what they'll be seeking. For Scorpio, they will seek in the fifth house. So Scorpio, it's again, all these kind of aspects of ego are very crazy in a way because Scorpio are very introverted sign. Eight is very introverted, secretive manipulative and introverted internal sign so for the scorpio ascendant for you to be seeking recognition in career in your work is very strong you feel very well recognized and you get an ego boost or feel in on the downside you might be a very narcissistic person because you're an introvert if you find recognition in your career because it comes in the 10th house. 10th house is the house of career, fame, recognition. Whatever work you're doing in the external world means a lot to the Scorpio people. What do my friends think? What, what do my uh, colleagues think? What do my business partners think? It's very important to Scorpio ascendant people, okay? Because their sun is shining here. For the Sagittarius ascendant people, it will be going towards the ninth house, the uh, sign number five, the Leo falls in the ninth house. Ninth house is for higher education, knowledge, foreign lands. You might want to get more recognition in foreign countries. You might even want, desire that. I want to go to America and make it there, make, make myself a millionaire, billionaire. Sagittarius and it are driven towards finding higher knowledge, higher education, the ninth house stands for higher education, foreign lands, philosophy, all of these kinds of things. So if the house of sun falls there, they will seek their recognition and fame from this aspect. Right? That's very strong for the Sagittarius people. Because Leo is ruling that ninth house for them. For the Capricorn, it's in the enemy house because Capricorn is ruled in the ascendant by Saturn, which is enemy of sun. Saturn is all about others. Sun is all about me, I, me, myself. Now this falls in the eighth house. In the eighth house is a house of secrets. It's a house of buried treasures. It's a house of um, physical intimacy, life after marriage, intimate life of a marriage, in-laws. Hidden treasures, whatever is buried underground, Scorpio wants to unearth everything. Eighth house is the house of unearthing secrets, treasures, sudden changes of life. So they might find their ego in intimate aspects. Why? Because Capricorn wants to feel things physically. Physical intimacy is very important for the Capricorn ascendant. Everything is felt in an earthly fashion. They want to feel stuff. And this being the house of physical intimacy, this is where they will feel a lot in terms of bed pleasures and all that physical intimate stuff with their spouse. They might have secret affairs. This is an enemy house for Capricorn, so they might not do very well in this terms. Why? Because fifth house is ruled uh, by sun. It's an enemy of Saturn. So they might find continuous challenges through their life with respect to intimate physical intimacy aspects that they seek. Saturn wants to see all grounded stuff. Coming to the house of Aquarius, 
that house number five, five falls in the house of spouse. They might have enemical spouse. They might be enemical towards the spouse because Saturn is opposite the sun. House of Saturn, which is the ascendant here, co-ruled by Rahu, also Uranus, if you want to go there, is looking at the spouse itself, your spouse, your business partner, all, all about others. Seven, house number seven is house of everybody else other than you. Starts with the intimate relationships. That's where your other aspect come out significantly. The Navamsha or whatever you want to call it. Here, these people might become very enemical towards the spouse. They might feel if they have dominated, one of the aspects of Saturn is to dominate. It's a rebel of sorts. It's rebellious towards its spouse. So if it does its job well, if it tries to dominate the spouse, they will feel their ego there. This is in this case, that's why Aquarius becomes very um, narcissistic in this way. They become, they have a tendency to go very narcissistical with respect to their spouses because house number five is falling and it's an enemy sign for them. Okay. Pisces ascendant, it falls under house number six, which is for daily work. So for the Pisces ascendant, they will find their sense of egoistic satisfaction in the house of daily work. So they might want to find themselves or go in more for how they work in their, in their daily routines, in their daily grind, as they say. So whatever daily work these people are doing, they will find a lot of satisfaction and a lot of ego attached there. You cannot criticize the Pisceans for their whatever work they are doing. They will be very angry. They will lash out at you. Because when anybody is attacked in their ego or feel like that, they will rebel. It's a touchy area. Number five is a touchy area for every one of us. It's also the house of enemies, disease, etc. So if this house is not well placed, this person might have a number of health issues as well. Okay. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is my take on where the ego falls for each one of the 12 ascendants. Okay, take care, be safe and have a good day.